structure of Q data structure, where we'll discuss simple linear Q program in C, that is implementation of Q in C. So prior to this, if I say prior to this in video number two, I request you to kindly watch video number two because after that, after watching that video, it will become very easy for you to understand the third lecture, that is this lecture, that is implementation of program, that is implementation of Q in C. Why? Because in second video, we have discussed linear Q, NQ and DQ algorithm. So I request you to, if you are directly coming to this video, kindly watch video number two, so that it will become very easy. It will take only five to 10 minutes. You can fast forward and understand what we this video is all about. So let's start with uh, implementation of linear Q. So now suppose, now suppose you have uh, uh, now this is what this is a menu program first of all you have uh, created a macro of size uh, I, I must say I, it's four so suppose uh, I've created a macro of size four no I've created a macro of size four and then I've created an array named Q having macro size four that is I've created an array of size four that is from zero one two and three having index is from zero to three fine okay so in the name of array is q why because we are now if since first of all the q is empty so i've created two global variable front and rear where f is representing front and r is representing rear initialized with minus one which i've already told you in second video if q is empty then front and rear both have minus one here what is this are declaration or prototype of three functions which we have used in our program one is nq one is dq one is display now in main function i'm creating a menu that is i've created a variable integer value label ch and what is while one while one means condition always true condition always true what is condition always true condition always true means if you have put anything other than zero either you can put 100 500 minus 2 minus 500 anything other than zero will always be true since condition is true i'll move inside i will enter inside the loop and i'll have a four print statement here i will have a five print statement four are representing one for if you press one you can nq if you press two you can dq if you press three you can display if you press four you can exit what is your choice since i have to create a, a link list that i have to insert element so i've pressed one so ch will have one Again, after that program is moving here, switch will have one and in switch I'll jump to case one and where I'm calling a NQ function. So I'm again clicking on NQ function and see here I'm reaching the NQ algorithm here where uh, NQ code, uh, not algorithm, which is similar to the algorithm. This code is similar to a algorithm. Now what? Now I will check. Now I will check this uh, 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 code again. If I'll see the code, void NQ, I came here. I have created a variable item item is a local variable while front and rear front and rear was global and whose value was initialized to minus one fine okay i'll check is r equal to max minus one what was the value of max max i have used four fine is r is equal to max minus one what is r minus one what is max four what is four minus one three is minus one equal to no condition is false so i'll not print overflow because the queue is empty in front of you is front equal to minus is front equal to else if front equal to minus one is front equal to minus one yes front is minus one yes front is minus one this condition become true because my queue is empty my queue is empty my queue is not full my queue is empty else if is front equal to minus one yes front is equal to minus one so condition is true so what i'll make i'll make front and rear both equal to zero so i'll make front and rear both equal to zero that is front and rear both will point to this location and i'll not go to the else part because else if is executed so i'll ask user enter the item so what suppose user has entered seven so at the location of item i will enter seven and at the location of q rear what is the value of rear now zero so at the zeroth position of q that is in zero position of array q i'll insert item what is item seven so seven will come here fine okay so what what next will happen i'll come out of the uh, i'll come out of this uh block this nq function block so the moment i come out this local variable will get deleted because its life is only when the program is in uh, is under the block it's when it's came out of the block its life is you no know, finish will front and rear will vanish no they are global variables so again where i'll go i'll go I'll go here from where we have received the call. And the next line is break. Break means I'll come out of the switch, switch block. I'll come out the switch block. What is this? This is while block. Will I come out while block also? No. In while coming out of while block, I have to check the condition. While checking the condition, I found the condition is again true. So again, I'll move inside the block and there I'm having so many options again. One for NQ, two for DQ, three for display, four for exit. What is your choice? Suppose I have again pressed one. 
so switch will have one case one again i'll call nq function so again i'll call nq function and here again i'll check is r what is value of r now r is 0 is 0 is equal to max minus what is max minus 1 i'll write fix here because it will remain fixed so is 0 equal to 3 no condition false is front equal to minus 1 no front is not minus 1 because front is not 0 condition is again false i'll write false i'll come to the else part i'll increment r so r equal to r plus 1 so what r will become 1 so r will point to the first empty uh, empty space and again i'll ask user to enter element i have created an item variable so again i'll ask user to enter suppose user entered 8 so item will have 8 now and in q rear what is rear always insertion takes from place from rear so in q1 what is the value of rear 1 in q1 i will insert item what is item 8 so 8 will get inserted over here fine so 8 will be inserted over here now what will happen again it will go back and suppose again i have pressed 1 so again it will come to uh, item again i have created a new variable item again i'll check is r equal to max minus one no r is one and one is not equal to condition false is front equal to minus one no front is zero again i'll increment r so r will come here i'll ask user to insert item suppose user has inserted 12 so in q rear what is the value of rear 2 so in q rear i will insert 12 again it will go back to same place again suppose user has pressed one again item variable is created now again it will check is rear is rear is equal to max minus one what is rear now two what is the current value of rear two is two equal to three no two is not equal to three again i'll check is front equal to minus one no front is not minus one because front is zero again i'll increment rear to rear plus one rear will come here i'll ask user to enter element suppose user has entered 15 so item will have value 15 and in q rear what is the value of rear 3 so in q3 i'll insert 15 so 15 will come here fine 15 will come come here again you will go back to the same place that is place i'm again i'm, I'm showing you that place again i'll go to the same place i'll come out of the switch i'll while again condition is true suppose again you have pressed one so when you have pressed one again nq function will be called this is the situation again you will check is the rear now current situation of rear is 3 is rear equal to max minus 1 yes rear is 3 max minus 1 is 3 yes it's equal so condition now becomes true and you can simply see that q is full so what you will print? you will print overflow that is no more space and you will return so this code is exactly working fine what will happen next you will go back that is you will come out of the scum to the same place break will take you out of switch while will not let you to come out because condition is always true since the condition is always true you will again get some option now you will press 2 why because you want to delete some element and you can see the situation that your queue is having some element if i show you the queue your queue is having 7 8 12 and 15 you have to keep in mind when while i will call dq so again if you press 2 now if you have pressed 2 so ch will have 2 switch will have two you will jump to case two and in case two you are calling a dq function i'll call a dq function where q is having five six eight and suppose 12 these were element I, I do not exactly remember suppose that so the current value of front is what zero and what is the rear value and three so this is front and this is a rear I, I i show you since you have pressed two i have created a variable item over here i have created a variable item and the value of max is 4 fine okay is front equal to minus 1 no front is 0 condition is false is front and rear both are equal no front is 0 rear is 3 this is also false this is also false so i'll come to the uh, else part what i'll do i'll first remove item so item will have q front what is the value of front 0 so what is q 0 5 so item will have 5 see item will have five that is you have somewhere removed actually it will not remove no it will remain like that only front will increment but in order to make you understand what i'm trying to tell you that i have deleted no uh, item will have uh, q front that is i will print on the screen deleted item is equal to item what is there in item 5 so is, it will print deleted item is equal to 5 and you will feel very good yes 5 was my front element and you will increment front front to front plus 1 so what will happen front will come here that is front will value well, will get 1 again so where you will go you will go back from where you have received the call from here you have received the call break will take you out of switch while will not let you to come out again you have a menu again suppose you have pressed 2 in switch 
case you will get value 2 in switch case you will get value 2 and in case 2 you will are again calling a dq function fine so here you have a situation like this i am calling a dq function I'm not calling uh, nq back i should call dq function sorry so again i am calling a dq function what will happen i have again created a variable item fine again i'll check is front equal to minus 1 no front is 1 yeah, is front and R equal? No, front and R are not equal. Front and rear are not equal. Again, false. What I'll do, I'll again remove Q front element. What is the value of front 1? So, what is there in Q1? 6. So, 6 will come here. I'll print 6 deleted item is equal to 6. I'll increment front. So, front will come here. And suppose I have deleted this. So, front new value is 2. And suppose you have again pressed 2, you will again come here. You have, you have all, again, you have created a variable item. You will again check is front equal to minus 1? No. Front is not minus 1 because front is 2. Again, you will check is front and rear equal? No. And you know when front and rear are equal, there is only one element. No, they are not equal. So, condition is again false. You will come to the else part. You will remove Q front element. What is front element? 2. So, what is front value 2? So, Q2 is 8. So, item will have 8. You will sprint in screen 8 and you will increment front. So, front will come here. Now, front and rear both are pointing to the same point uh, index. Front is 3, rear is 3. Fine. Okay. Again, you will go back. Again, suppose you have pressed 2. So, you will again come here. You have again created a variable item. You will again check is front equal to minus 1? No. Front is not minus 1. You will see now front and rear are equal. Yes. Now, front and rear are equal. This shows that Q has only one element. Fine. I have deleted this element now. So, what you will do? You will remove element first. No. So, item will have Q front. What is the value of front 3? Q3 is what? 12. So, item will have 12. You will print in screen 12 and you will in and since there was only one element, so you will initialize front and rear both will minus one because the last element was there and you have deleted. So you have deleted and front and rear will point minus one. So again, you will not go to the else part. You will again go back and suppose you have again pressed two. If you have pressed two, two, what will happen? You will again come here. You will see that you will, you will create an item variable. And you will see is front equal to minus 1? Yes, now front is minus 1. That is, there is no more element in the queue. What you will print? You will print under flow. That is, there is no element to be deleted. Fine. And you will return. Fine. So, this was all about DQ coding. Now, again, what will happen? You will go back. You have received a call from NQ. You will, uh, next line is break. Break will let you out of switch. While will not let you out because condition is always true. Again, you have multiple options. Now, you have pressed 3 now you have pressed three. since your queue is empty now there is no element so switch will have three and in case three you have you are calling a display function so i'm calling a display function since the queue is empty fine so here if queue is empty what was the value of front minus one what was the value of rear minus one you will come here you will see is front equal to minus one yes condition is true so what you will print you will print queue is empty you will print Q is empty, which is absolutely right. Now, if this is not, if this not has not been a condition, suppose the element are 12, 15, 2 and 5. So, front value is 0, rear value is 3. That is, front is 0 and rear is 3. So, you, again, now, if suppose this is the condition, somebody has pressed 3, you came here, you will check is front equal to minus 1. No, condition is false. You came here to the else part, you have initialized i with f. What is f? 0. So, if you have initialized i with 0 and you are checking is i less than r, what is the value of r3? Is 0 less than 3? Yes, condition becomes true. You came inside and you printed q i. What is i 0? q 0, what is 0? 12. So, you printed 12. Tab will give us space. Again, you will go and you will increment i. So, what i will become? i will become 1. You will again check is 1 less than 3? 3 yes 1 is less than 3 you will again print q1 what is q1 15 you will print 15 and this tab will give space you will increment i i will become 2 you will again check is 2 is less than 3 yes 2 is less than 3 so you will print q2 q2 qi what is q2 2 so you will print 2 and this tab will give a space again you will increment i i will become 3 is 3 less than 3? No, but equal to. Condition again become true. You will print Q3. What is Q3? 5. So, you will print 5. Again, you will go and increment I. I will become 4. Is 4 less than 3? No, condition now becomes false. You will come out of for loop and you will come out of else and see you have printed what the element in the queue which was 12, 15, 2 and 5. So, this was all about program of, program of linear queue in C.